Hello, I am Joe Robbie, the lead product designer at EKWB. I've been working with PCs for about 10 years. I started as just a modder, just trying to make cases that were available at the time fit water cooling nicely. And back like 10 years ago, everything was designed with optical drives, hard drive cages, and you know stuff that I didn't really need at all. Uh, it was the advent of uh, SSDs and really high TDP components. I think uh, the first card that I liquid cooled, I had a pair of uh, GTX 780s. So that was instantly 500 watts and you needed a big loop, but there were no cases with big radiator capacity. So I built a custom uh, 750D and cleaned everything out. And then, you know, you spent weeks basically covering up all the holes that you'd left behind from cutting whatever out of the case. Uh, following that, basically, uh, the community really loved it, so I ended up getting sponsored by EKWB. Uh, I was also sponsored by MSI and uh, HyperX, amongst others, to produce uh, social media content, to produce, uh, you know, case mod logs of everything that I've been doing on forums and making updates. Uh, I even attended a few events, and that's where I met uh, Parvum systems and with those guys I was making case designs and we did a lot of custom work so someone would want a themed case or a special set of hardware and eventually one day uh, eight pack approached me from Overclock is UK and said you know could we build a system with a custom case um, so I ended up duplicating a build that I'd made for one of my friends uh, and that was the first eight pack system we made together. We made about uh, seven systems over the course of two years. Uh, I think the last I made there was the first uh, Orion X, which was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, triple GPU, triple loop, uh, two systems. So really crazy. A little while after that, I was just doing builds for people. I did a lot of builds for various regions of NVIDIA from NVIDIA UK, NVIDIA US, and the uh, European NVIDIA branches. So they asked for uh, themed mods. They were mostly related to games. So I think one set was Overwatch, one set was Diablo 3 when it launched, and then I did a big launch system for the 1080 Ti when that came out. And that was like that ultimate GeForce campaign. That was really cool. Uh, and a little while after that, I came out to visit EK because, you know, through these five years, I'd constantly been using EK parts. Uh, so I came to see where it was all made and landed a job here. So since then, I've been working pretty much uh, every time we launch a new product, I'll be collaborating to help design it. Uh, occasionally, I get to do some builds, make some video content. So that's the fun part that I've I've managed to earn in that five years. And today we're gonna to be looking at uh, an upcoming case. Uh, this is a collaboration with Inwin. I worked a while back to produce uh, a case mod for CES in 2019. Um, that was the beginnings of the 909EK. Uh, and after that, we spent a few months refining it and it debuted at Computex in 2019 as a limited edition run that you could buy. Through the course of a year, they all sold out. It was really nice to have that within when uh, they always deliver fantastic quality from the from the case parts. And, you know, together with the parts we built for it, it was a, a really special system. And now we're basically looking at repeating that on a slightly bigger scale. So we will be making it a much easier case to live with. The 909EK was really just a showcase. It was built to present the original quantum hardware. I did it really cleanly, uh, but it was very difficult to daily perhaps. It didn't have glass side panels. It didn't have dust filters. The IO was on the inside of the case, so there wasn't like a power button on the outside. Really basic stuff that 
everyone screamed out for. Everyone trolled us that the layout was inverted and all the hardware was upside down, but you know, it was done for presentation. So this time around, we're gonna be thinking a lot more about what it's gonna be like to daily use, but keep that inspiration, the, the impression of quality, uh, and really build upon our relationship with Inwin to make a case that suits everyone who's liquid cooling and not just people who are showing off to the nth degree. Right now, we're gonna be looking at some cases. So while we may have added a bunch of very useful daily features like a power button on the outside of the case, we also took away the distribution plate by default and we made the case a little more friendly uh, for any use scenario. So if you're building a hard tube loop inside, if you're using our products, our Matrix 7 products, then the placement of radiators, uh, the layout of the brackets, which fans and radiators mount to has been very much considered to an extent that no other case has done before. And we will be able to offer natively a distribution plate that has mountings in the case, four screws on its inside, and then radiators slide directly through the whole case and into the distribution plate with only two fittings. So that's something really we've not been able to support on anyone else's case and we've not done on any of our own cases ever before. So that's gonna be absolutely epic. Another big point of contention for the 909EK was the fact that it was inverted and everyone who put a build together instantly got trolled with, Haha, why is everything upside down? So on this occasion, we recognize why that was nice. We always wanted to make an inverted case because it's you know, so clean to look at the GPU block upside down and it really abstracts all of the hardware and the what cooling tends to stand out in that format. But, so, you know, if you don't want to be trolled, you can also flip around all of the internals of the case. Uh, that's something that we're still refining, but in this sample, you can also see now that it's upside down and the rear panel of the case removes. You turn that around and with it, the motherboard tray, the power supply tray will be able to slide out independently of each other and fit back the opposite way around. You can also flip the power supply only if you wanted to have cables coming from above rather than below. In order for us to achieve all of these features, we needed a new layout from the 909 since it really didn't accommodate sliding in radiators, flipping things over or not having half the case on the inside of the case and half on the outside. Together with established case modder Nessa, uh, known as SS Mods, uh, we actually arrived at this internal layout with a top and a bottom radiator, uh, motherboard tray and PSU suspended at the front. And that gave a really nice uh, open view of all the hardware that was true to the original concept, but it's a little bit friendlier when you don't have such involved loops and you don't have such elaborate distribution plates. So from there, everything came back to EK. Our R&D went through it, then we sat down with Inwin, again worked over it, and we're still in that process. We arrived at, I think, the fifth iteration of the model before we were happy to sample it, and now we've seen it in real life. We still have a bunch more things that we'd like to change. So again, we'll be revisiting a new 3D model and repeat the sample, and we expect the next sample will be a final production sample for the case. So while we have played with the case a little bit and we've tried in motherboards, we've tried in PSUs, we haven't actually done a complete loop in the prototype yet. So that is what we're gonna start right now. Okay, so now we have all of the hardware and probably a little bit extra that we're gonna need in the build. There's a lot of extra fittings just because I don't know exactly how things will work out. I'm trying to approach this as uh, a simple build, not to have an elaborate distribution plate that fixes everything. But I'm also trying to be ambitious with two distribution blocks. So we have the Uni 140 that was originally made for a desk PC. Uh, I'm gonna spin them sideways and use one for the top radiator, one for the bottom radiator and then have four tubes across the build to the CPU and GPU. And they're gonna go kind of on the front of where the power supply is. 
the radiators are S420s, so the biggest size in terms of area and probably the best choice for low speed fans. Uh, and these will actually get hidden inside the case um, because the side, uh, side brackets which hold the extrusions, they will kind of cover up the side and the radiators get hidden. We have FPT 140 fans to keep the cabling neat. I do have black ones, I also have the RGB ones, I'll see which one I like along the way. Then also, slightly quirky hardware, this is a Z590 Aorus Tachyon with a with a 11900K and a G Skill DDDR4 Trident Zs. It's a different layout board, it's very big for how much is on it because this is an extreme uh, extreme overclocking board so it's got a lot of additional controls and strange placement of the power connector which should look interesting that will get hidden behind the GPU in the build and the GPU is a Radeon RX 7900 XDX because I wanted to finally use a special edition water block that we have for the Radeon CPU block I'm gonna go back to the magnitude but I'm gonna swap it out to be Flexi and black accent and black frame to match the GPU block. And that's pretty much it. I have yellow coolant planned, but we'll see. Maybe I'll change my mind. Let's go. Now we have all the hardware blocked up, the CPU blocks on the board, GPU blocks done, fans and radiators are together, but now we need to put them on the radiator bracket for the case itself. So it's time that we take a look inside and one of the first things we will see is also something that we'd like to change a little bit. So as it stands now, the rear panel comes off in one entire piece and when you take the rear panel off the full side of the case comes off at the same time. That's fine when the case is all assembled like it is now but when you've also removed the side panels and you take the back panel off then when you go to take out the motherboard tray there's nothing supporting the front corner or the top and the bottom basically. So we're gonna take off a strip from here and have it permanently on the edge of the case. So the top and bottom is always rigid when you take off the back, when you take off the sides, and when you take anything out of the inside. The other thing you can see now, we have inside radiator brackets with all the screws ready for radiators, and we have dust filters, and they both fit into separate grooves in two extrusions. There's one extrusion on each side of the case and a very small one in the middle. And when we invert this case, you have to swap over this set of extrusions with this set. So the little rail moves to the back and then you screw the motherboard tray onto the other side. Um, but what we're gonna do a bit differently and we figured out that you don't actually need to take both halves of the case apart. This could all stay assembled uh, if we made the dust filter and the radiator bracket asymmetrical. So we add another 50 millimeters of metal to the side of these, you'll be able to turn those around and slide the motherboard tray off this pair directly onto that pair. So you'll be able to just slide it out, slide it back in on the front. Um, it's not a big change, just something we realized when we first saw it. So now to assemble the radiators, I'm going to take out each of the identical radiator mounts.
Do I have the microphone? Am I working? Nice. Nice. So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more about the case. When we get the production sample, we'll show you every single little detail. But for now, I think you got a great overview of the layout. If you want to see more builds, coming up is Attila's build in the Asus Hyperion with our new distribution plate. This will also have a distribution plate in time. So be sure to subscribe and see you next time.